Will you please welcome the incomparably gorgeous Arthur Smith. You know, Joe still asked me for a copy of that video. Um, God, you know, the Victoria Palace, fantastic. You know, 70 years ago, there was an act on here, did 10 minutes. I don't think he did very well. He never played a, a theatre as big as this again. His name was Jimmy Kirk, the singing comedian, and he was my granddad. <laughs> hey, Jim, here's for you, mate. Uh, he used to get up, this is true, he used to get up at five o'clock in the morning and I said to him once, I said, Grandad, what the fuck? Well, actually, no, I didn't say fuck to my granddad. Well, I did actually, he was deaf. <laughs> and he used to call me Caroline. Yeah. <laughs> I, used to say, I said to him, I said, Grandad, what the fuck do you do at five o'clock in the morning? He said, well, Caroline, <laughs> have a cup of tea and a piece of toast and before you know, it's half past six. Linda, what a marvellous woman she was. But I remember she thought about the world, Linda. I remember one night we sat thinking and we kind of in the end came to the conclusion that probably, maybe, probably, the hokey cokey is what it's all about. <laughs> there, she's there somewhere, left foot in, left foot out. Um, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to recite you a poem, then I'm going to tell you a dirty joke, <clears throat> and then I'm going to read some, a little thing that I uh, wrote uh, after Linda died, and I'm going to say thank you at the end of each of them, which means you know that I've finished and you can applaud. <laughs> so it's three thank yous. I introduce just a minute and fuck off, that's my deal. <laughs> this poem is by a woman called Sheena Pugh, and it's called Sometimes. Sometimes things don't go after all, from bad to worse. Some years muscadel faces down frost, green thrives, the crops don't fail. Sometimes a man aims high and all goes well. A people will sometimes step back from war, elect an honest man, decide they care enough they cannot leave some stranger poor. Some men become what they were born for. Sometimes... Our best efforts do not go amiss. Sometimes we do as we meant to. The sun will sometimes melt a field of sorrow that seemed hard frozen. May it happen for you. Thank you. My wife pulls her husband over and says, you're a cunt. It says, not only do I think you're a cunt, the next door neighbours think you're a cunt, everyone in the street thinks you're a cunt, everywhere where you work with thinks you're a cunt, all our relatives think you're a cunt, everyone you ever meet thinks you're a cunt. And if they had a competition to find the biggest cunt in the world, you would come second. And he says, well, why only second? She says, because you're a cunt. Linda told me that, actually, yeah. <laughs> Don't any of you know Linda? Any of you here? She was a great woman. Uh, I, I, start, I did this article in The Stage uh, about her, and uh, I started off by talking about the various ways. It's really hard for women to do stand-up comedy as much. You know, like, you know, you already people judge their appearance. I mean, you know. Do you think I should fire my stylist? Um, and I talked a bit about the various ways women can approach comedy, and I said, and then I ended with, and then there is a female comic who chooses not to highlight her own sex, but rather to talk about the world itself. Linda Smith, who died two weeks ago, was one such. Her brilliant wit was aimed at everything around her, from the war in Iraq, to Davina, to Erith Leisure Centre, <laughs> and right down to Tony Blair. Her observations were apposite, hilarious, and always grounded in compassion and her own political views, which rarely coincided with those of Edwina Curry. 
And there was an event which I talk about here. As Mark Steele pointed out at the gathering in her honour at the Theatre Royal Stratford East, it was not true that she bore no malice. She had contempt for bullies and those who abused their power. Mark placed Linda in a long line of English radicals and paid the first in a series of funny moving tributes. We heard of her rich and productive Sheffield days, of her double act with Anne Lavelle touring round doing gigs for striking miners, of her scintillating radio performances, her work for the Humanist Society, her love of jazz, cricket and gardening. Bill Bailey accompanied Kevin Eldon who sang a stunning version of the Beatles in my life. Jeremy Hardy was uproarious and sad, while Warren, Linda's longtime partner, was simply magnificent. All the while, we glimpsed the, glimpsed the story of a life led with grace and a great, big, funny, whole heart. I was delighted that Linda and Warren came to my birthday party in Paris three winters ago, two winters ago. She was on great form and saw off various younger revelers to earn the title last person on the dance floor. We walked down the Champs-Élysées together on the afternoon and I mentioned that a particular person who neither of us liked but I had felt obliged to invite had pulled out the day before. Linda did not roar her approval. She felt uh, that, that she felt she was far too classy for that. Instead, she sighed and said, oh, well, I suppose we'll muddle through somehow. <laughs> she loved literature and poetry and herself possessed an uncanny ear and a writer's instinct for the mot juste. There were a lot of well-chosen words at Stratford East on that freezing day. It was a celebration that no one who was there will forget. Linda Smith has been and gone. Her family and a whole generation of comics and writers stood to applaud. Thank you. And now, of course, a lot of you will know Linda from her absolutely brilliant uh, radio recordings. We're delighted to have with us the whole gang. We're going to delight you with a special Linda Smith Memorial, just a minute. Nicholas Parsons and the whole team. <laughs> <laughs> 